Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. Father God, we just thank you. Father, I just thank you. I, t- I, w- I just want to praise your holy name. I w- thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all the challenges, but also thank you for the rewards. Thank you for the high times and the uh, awesome times and the ups and the downs. The downs are also just very difficult to go through, but at the same time, so rewarding when we finally get over the hill and we're able to look back upon the challenges that we had and be able to worship you and thank you for bringing us through those times. We thank you, Father God, for the for the days that we have ahead of us. We praise you for conditioning us and and training us and testing us and bringing us to the place that we need to be in, the place that we need to be able to walk in, the feelings that we need to have, the empathy that we need to have for our fellow man. And we praise you, Father God, and we just thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you for the time that you were given the people that were just like us. The time that you were given the people out there that uh, that that were running toward uh, metaphorically running toward the stairs to that airplane that is sitting on the tarmac getting ready to take off the the engines are running and they're not quite on the plane yet yet they're running across the tarmac and they're they're hoping that they're going to make it and father so many of us were just like that so many of us were not ready. So many of us maybe are still not ready, and if, and maybe there are those of us who, like myself at one time or many times, thought I was ready, but realized later, after some testing and trials and tribulation, realized that I was not. And Father, I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you for your mercy endures forever, and that you are so, so patient, because we oftentimes do not perceive your be your delays or what if, what appears to be delays, but perhaps your strategic uh, realignments of time through calling of audibles as being so merciful because we are sitting there in our challenges and agony, looking at our situation, but not remembering the times that we were not ready. And we just want to praise you, Father God, for helping us to be able to see that there are so many that are still not ready, so many that need to be awakened. And yet, We also know that you're merciful in the sense that you're going to allow, well, pretty horrible things to happen on this earth by raising your hand of protection away from this earth and allowing Satan and those who are cast down to earth with him to have a period of time on this earth to cause very difficult challenges, indeed the great tribulation in such a fashion that it will cause so many of the elect that have been passed on to the great tribulation to realize that the time is upon them and that they should fall to their knees and cleanse their robes white and clean in the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, our elder brother, our the lover of our soul. And we thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you for continuing to nurture us, to continue to bring us back, even keel, uh, bring us back to a place where we are walking in a straight line on that narrow, narrow path realizing and and that that having anything other than a contrite spirit is deviating from our understanding of where we need to be to be able to seek you out father god to be humble and contrite and full of empathy and love and compassion for those that are all around about us those who are not even our brothers and sisters but those who need who who are our brothers and sisters but do have not realized it as of yet and we thank you, Father. Those so many, so many, Father, so many people we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. So many people, Father God, as it says in Matthew 22, will turn away. They will wave their hands and they will go back to their businesses. They will ignore the warnings. They won't heed them. And so many of those are the people that are in the brick and mortar churches that we struggle to even be a part of even these days because we know. And we praise you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for helping us to be awake, to be aware, to be full of everything, everything that is just so part of who you are, Father God. Make us that new wineskin. Make us, fill us with everything that is gushing with the glory and the liquid love of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ and all things that are of the city of God. We praise your holy name and we thank you, Jesus, for the days that we are in. 
And we pray that you will continue to change us, mold us, and shape us into what we need to become in order to be able to receive that outpouring of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ upon that day that we should be able to complete the work that has been defined in us, Psalm 139, verse 16, Ephesians 2, 10, before there was time. And now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and present us faultless before the presence of your glory, Father God, with exceeding joy, exceeding joy, if we only knew what that really, really meant. And to you, Father God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, power, dominion, authority, both now and forever. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, you know, here we are. And you know what? I'll tell you what. I uh, I, I uh, had some conversations behind the scenes with Linda Hashi and Jeff uh, Byerly uh, prior to the program. And they have so much information uh, to put out, which is a blessing. Praise God. that Because um, I know we don't all have time. Um, uh, it's not, it's time management really. And it's not a matter of whether or not you have the time or not really. I mean, sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't like today I woke up and I was like, holy moly, because I'm, I'm still recovering from a major, a major, I mean, earth shattering, unbelievable. You, I mean, you name it, a major, major renovation to the golden J I B studios here in lovely Tampa, Florida. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, it was earth shattering glory to be to God. I mean, it was like unbelievable. I mean, uh, Oh, Oh, uh Oh, Oh no. Oh boy. I don't know. That that wasn't supposed to happen. Perhaps the nails were a little short and uh <laughs> some of this stuff isn't staying up the way it is supposed to. But anyway, praise God. Um, you know, it's it's amazing how many things, you know, sometimes we don't even realize the the difficulties and the trials and the tribulations of testing that God is putting us through. Sometimes it, we don't even realize the things that we're going through are a test. We just see them as, oh no, it's another little bump in the road. Uh, and, and, and maybe you don't even perceive it as a bump in the road, you know, maybe you just perceive it as, um, you know, just, some, uh, oh, it's another day. Oh no. Another decision, another, whatever, you know, uh, maybe that car cutting you off on the road, me, 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 you know, uh, putting fingers up in the air that they should not and all that kind of thing. Maybe that's a test and you don't even realize it. You're just like going, oh gee, another day, another, you know, uh, commute to the office kind of thing and all that. And uh, maybe the Lord is watching, maybe he's tabulating, maybe the angels are watching and they're tabulating, you know, how you're behaving, how you're reacting, if you will, to that person in the line at Walmart that turns around and gives you a, you know, a, uh, a quart and a half of snarkosaurusism, you know, and, um, and we really don't, we, we really don't realize how all this stuff is ultimately being tabulated. We really don't realize, uh, you know, and that's why it's so very, very important that we are each, um, you know, willing and, 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 and indeed uh, hungry to uh, self-examine, you know, that we would examine ourselves. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 28, again, in 31 and 32. So very, very important that we judge ourselves, that we, uh, ex- you know, examine ourselves, that we're constantly in a state of confession, of our sins for if we confess of our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and it's a state that's what it is that's that's what it means he sent you know uh for you know uh uh that's what it means uh to practice righteousness first john 3 7 it doesn't mean that you arrive which i used to think that that it did it did uh and and i but i still kept on finding these little nuances in the scripture that you know kind of I don't know, they befuddled me. And I, I was like, well, that's not completely reconciling. Totally. I mean, I, I would get to the point where I was like 90% reconciled. And then I would be like, wait a minute, what about this? And what about this? And how about this? And if you, if you turn this over and you look at it this way and you look at it that way and you look at it from the West and you look at it from the East, and you look at it from the North. And, um, and then I was like, you know, that's not a hundred percent. It's not fully reconciling with me. And then, um, and then I would pray and I would seek the Lord. And then I, 
go go to my um, you know uh, Strong's Enhanced Concordance, you know, with my PC Study Bible Professional, and I take a look at it that way, and Strong's con- and Englishman's Concordance, and the, you know, and, and all of it, and I would be like, wait a minute. Oh, okay. And then the Lord would reveal some nuance about a word like of, you know, uh, and, and, and I know you might say, well, the word of, are you kidding me? But the problem is that Greek, as I've mentioned many times, Greek doesn't translate directly into English and Hebrew doesn't translate directly in English either. And so, um, and, and, and probably very few languages do a very good job of translating directly in English. And I also know just from personal experience in, in the international professional world as a consultant that, uh, you know, when you're dealing with uh, trying to translate information over, for example, to the Latin languages, I'm sorry, the Latino languages, like, you know, different permutations of Spanish, for example, Spanish in Spain is different than Mexican Spanish is in Mexico is different than Portuguese, big time different than Portuguese. And like, and Jose was even telling me, and I miss Jose. I wish he would come back on the show, but I know he's struggling. You know, he's not struggling with his, well, I don't know if he is or not. I talk to him now and then, but he's got long hours. Let's just put it that way with his commute and everything from work at his new job, which he's very blessed to have uh, and was a gift from God. But, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, but the commute is very long. You know, so unfortunately he can't get back in time to start the show with us and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I'll keep on talking to him and see if we can get him back on. But um, praise God, it would be a blessing if he could. But anyway, uh, you know, um, so, uh, you know, it's just it's just a blessing to realize that we have the power. We have the I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit filled power, but that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. The the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit in us. If we know how to wield the sword of the spirit and we ought to be doing that as part of our walk. Hallelujah. Uh, But at the same time. Oh, and by the way, I would point anybody that wants to learn a little bit extra. And, you you know, again, discern it. Take it to the Lord in prayer uh, and take it to the Lord in prayer over a period of time, because you might get a check in your spirit at first. And then. Over time, as you pray more and more, because why does sometimes we get a check in the spirit and then later we're like, wait a minute, hey, and then all of a sudden that check in the spirit goes away and our, our spirit becomes accepting and we, we jump on to the next level and we start to learn more and more and more and more. Why is that? Well, it, I, I, I don't know all the answers. All I can say is that sometimes I think our own personal earthly boundaries that we set up for ourselves um, – Kind of like, I don't know, intermingle with the presence of the Holy Spirit in our walk in our lives in such a fashion that it causes us to feel that we're having a check in our spirit when in reality, it's not really 100 percent the Holy Spirit that is giving us that check, but it's our own desire to discern and be careful and um, and then our own biases or our own concerns get in the way, and then that causes us to not be able to receive, which is why Jesus would say all the time, uh, you know, in various uh, parts of the scripture, if you can receive it. You know, if you can receive it, why would he say that to people? Why would he, why would he, you know, think about that, that, that he knew that those words were going to be recorded in his scripture or, or you know, in the Bible, ultimately Jesus, God would knew first Timothy three sixteen, God come in the flesh, seen by the angels, uh, preached amongst the Gentiles, uh, received, you know, uh, uh, received up in the glory, you know, all that uh, praise God, you know, uh, you know, how, how is it that someone who would know? ultimately that these things were all going to be penned and scribed would say if you can receive it was he not when he when he when those things were penned and scribed when he knew that those things were going to be penned and scribed into the holy scripture did he not know that he would be talking to people that eventually that would be completely filled with the holy spirit speaking in tongues and laying hands on the sick and all that other good stuff praise god as we all ought to be all right did he not know that of course he did of course he did well why would he say, if you can receive it? Well, he would say that because he knew that we are always at war with the flesh, that, that, that there are three dynamics that are in play. And, he, and this is overly simplifying, but it makes a point. There are three dynamics that are in play in our walk every moment of the day. There is our own free will, which is, by the way, God's will. There is... Um, <clears throat> There is, uh, you know, the uh, demonic uh, realm that is constantly shooting fiery darts at us. There are the demons that are shooting fiery darts at us that are unauthorized to do so, but do so anyway because they're rebellious, stinking, 
ugh, I'll control my um, I'll control my uh, descriptive terms because I do not like the darkness and I really don't like the darkness. Let's just put it that way. And then um, and then you've got the influences of the Holy Spirit and the Lord. And you've got so at at the very minimum, you've got those three dynamics in play. You've got uh, and and you're like and and, um, let me tell you something. This is these are the kinds of things that we talk about a lot. For example, on the next on this coming next Saturday's. Uh, which will be, let me look on the calendar here, one, two, three, four, five, six, on Saturday night the 6th of this next week, this next weekend. Um, we'll be doing, I think it's show number 242 of the Peterson Chronicles, and I go into a deep dive um, discussion about the concepts of timelines, you know, going through time. Um, how How is it that... There are fallen angelic beings that would project uh, holographic displays and show people, or there are, or that, that's one thing, or there are these uh, humans that are are traveling the world, and they're tricking, I don't know, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians, especially on the internet. I've, I've seen I've seen their handiwork. And some of them dress in Hindu garb and stuff like that. And everybody just embraces them because they have a beard and everything. And they're like, oh, they're a wonderful Christian because they use the name of Jesus. The problem is there are fake heavens that are established. There are – I found this out from the daughter of uh, Odin Hetrick. I don't know if it was Joy Hetrick or – I forget. But um, I'd have to go back and look at my notes. But anyway, I spoke to her for like four hours, and she was like, oh, no, yeah, no. Satan has set up fake false heavens. Uh, and um, and has taken uh, people to them. Uh, and you've got these people that are very famous, very well-versed, traveling around the world, and they go up into heaven. But if you don't know your scripture, you might even know your scripture really well, but not be as dogmatic as you ought to be about the literalism of the scripture and taking, you know, and really embracing that and saying, you know what, I draw a line there, you know. And, and it's tricky, too, because... You can know your scripture really, really well, but you can also get so carried away with wanting every, you know, everything that's in the Bible is true, but not everything that's true is in the Bible. And so it gets a little bit tricky in the sense that you're, you gotta, you know, you can easily throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, well, I'm not going to go there because, you know, if I go there, it's, it's, you know, I don't see that anywhere in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, X, Romans, uh, first and second Peter and all that, you know, and, and so what happens is you can actually blockade yourself from receiving mysteries of the scripture that are of God um, by virtue of saying, well, I don't see that there in the Bible, by golly. And, uh, you know, and then unfortunately, you know, you kind of miss the the intent of the last verse of the Gospel of John, where they say, you know, essentially, I'm um, paraphrasing, they say that I suppose if we had written down everything that Jesus had done, uh, it would fill up enough books to, you know, fill the entire world. Okay, so there's your warning, Will Robinson, that we really only have a teensy, weensy, 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 tiny little bit of the overall understanding of the mysteries of the Bible and everything like that. Okay. And then you got, then you, then to make add insult to injury, you've got these Gnostics out there or Gnostic esque. And of course the, you know, the little C Christians are going to be pointing at anybody like tribulation now and going, they're a bunch of Gnostics. Those nasty, naughty people, they're heretics. They're heretics. I tell you, you know, they give no regard to the fact that there were 14 books of the Apocrypha that were in the original 1611 King James. They give no, no acknowledgement whatsoever to the fact that there are 22 books in the 60 or in the uh, today's 66 book canon King James Bible that are mentioned in that in the 66 book King James Bible today uh, that uh, that are no longer either not available or were directly mentioned and are available but are still considered to be part of the Apocrypha, which Apocrypha, which, which ought to be like, you know, again, another warning, Will Robinson. I mean, why would the Book of Jubilees be called out explicitly in the King James Bible of today, yet 
yet churchianity still refers to it as apocrypha. And then they will just throw you under the bus and tell you that you are heretical because you dare to look for additional information, you know. And But it's okay, by the way, if you go into your family, your friendly neighborhood family Christian bookstore and buy some smiley, wily, big, fat-faced, happy, smiley, jet-flying, evangelical Christian's book and uh, – and, and, and you know, and 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 accept their uh, form of heresy, like once saved, always saved, and you have no personal obligation to do a did deadly thing. Uh, you know, uh, you know, no, you can just coast along and give me, you know, forty percent of your income every month, and you're going to be just fine. And by the way, you'll get extra prosperity and drive a much nicer car. All right, and it's a, you know, there was a uh, even I I skipped over it. I didn't include it in the in the uh, in the news uh, today, but I because I, I just you know I just don't I just so much contention and pushing and shoving out there right now and finger pointing, but there I did stumble over an article as I was doing the show notes for tonight, uh, whereby the uh, I, I I think the headline was something along the lines of this. This evangelical Christian pastor's jet was something along the line. Of, it was like it, this one was not blessed uh, by God. Uh, something along that line. Something like that. Evidently, there was an uh, an evangelical Christian pastor's jet that uh, well, it didn't have a, a a smooth landing. We'll just put it that way. And kind of like crash landed uh on the um on the uh runway on landing. Uh and I didn't look into it. I don't know who it was and I I know there are those out there that are, you know, uh you know, uh but here's the thing. I also had a conversation with uh Pastor Aaron Wagner when he was at a Todd White conference multiple times and uh, also while he was at my house and he told me that he was there in the presence of um of uh you know, uh Benny Hinn and Benny Hinn, you know, which a lot of people believe are, is, you know, uh, over the hill or, you know, he, he's gone too far and that he's just not, you know, where he ought to be in his walk. And I've had people show me YouTube videos that impeach him and make him look really bad and all that kind of stuff, which, of course, I don't trust any of that stuff. It might be true. It might be not. I'm not going to worry about it because I don't want to ever, 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 ever judge a uh, fellow brother or sister in Jesus Christ, even if they have all the attributes of being, you know, not right. Okay. It's not my job. That is God's job. And it's our job to pray for them. Now, that being said, uh, I, I, I received from Pastor Aaron Wagner when he was at the house here uh, visiting this, uh, you know, a few number of weeks ago uh, that he was at a Todd White conference in the back of this humongous audience. I mean, football, so I guess, you know, tens of thousands of people, I suppose. I don't know how, how many, but it was a big, 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 big event. And, um, uh, and he even called me because they couldn't get somebody delivered. They were having a difficult time getting somebody delivered uh, uh, of demons. They were, they, they were uh, getting people healed, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, you know, uh, it was amazing. It was a big movement of the Lord. Uh, people were going out in the spirit all over the place. People were getting healed of all kinds of terrible sicknesses, and people were getting delivered of devils and demons and all kinds of things. But they could not get this one person delivered. This one person, they could not get the devils out of them. Uh, and, uh, and it frustrated them. And uh, Pastor Aaron came back uh, behind the stage uh, while Todd White was out in the, in, in the front, and uh, he called me on the phone. I, I think it was like – I don't know what day it was. I forget. But anyway, um, uh, he calls me up on the phone, and I'm like pacing uh, back and forth because I, a lot of times when I'm thinking it really fast, really hard, and I'm talking to somebody, uh, you know, I'll, I'll walk back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I was doing that you know, in the kitchen while I'm talking to him, and I'm like, you know, well, what's, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, well, we can't get this woman to, delivered. We can't get her delivered. And I, I said, tell me some of the things that she said. So Tell me this. Tell me this. You know, you fill me in. And um, and uh, and then I was like, oh, I said, she's S.R.A.D.I.D., man. She's S.R.A.D.I.D. And he's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, brother, you're, you're not going to get her delivered. The problem is when when the devil, uh, as we know from the many, uh, you know, Douglas Riggs, Danny Duvall, uh, Dr. Preston Bailey, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the people that we've been so blessed to have on the program that specialize in delivering people of, you know, that satanic ritual abuse and uh, disassociative identity disorder uh, and those who have been victims of it and 
and delivered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and still struggling even today, um, uh, the, you know, we know that, that they create soul rooms or compartments. and They're known as altars, and that in each one of those altars is a different person, essentially, uh, but it's a split of the original personality. The original personality is known as core. That's what they refer to it, clinically speaking, in the SRA DID deliverance world. They call it core. Okay, and then they have the alternate personalities or the soul rooms that are split off due to trauma. This is the kinds of things that, went, that happened with Robert Vandrius Mitchell, who we're still anticipating uh, joining the program on, uh, I think it's the 14th of July. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to it. It's hard for me to remember all the memories and pull up all the calendars and everything during a live show. But anyway. Um, or it might be the 17th. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, it's one of the Wednesdays, uh, the second or the third Wednesday or something like that in July. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he, his internet was not hooked up. He got moved into another flat and, uh, he knew his internet was going to be up and, and running in time for the show, but guess what? It wasn't. But anyway, so uh, Aaron Wagner calls me up during this Todd White conference, and um, and they're delivering people and casting devils out, and people are just crying and going out in spirit and everything. And he's like, "What's going on? I can't get we we can't get rid of the demons in this one person." I said, "You're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to." And I explained to him how it works and the soul rooms and everything. I'm doing this on the phone while he's behind the actual main stage where Todd White is out talking to you know, preaching to thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the audience. Praise Jesus. Uh, over in Orlando, praise God. Uh, so anyway, um, and I explained to him how it works and everything, and he's like, "Oh wow, oh my gosh," you know. And, and uh, so praise God, little by little, uh, some some folks are waking up to the wiles of the devil, the, the you know the depth of the, the depths of the darkness, and how bad it is out there. Praise God, and thank you Jesus for that. Uh, you know, and it's not that those people don't have hope; it's just that it takes time because you need to be able to get each one of those. You have to treat each one of the altars as an individual person as you're delivering them. That's essentially what, how it works. And if you were going to sit down with somebody and get them delivered and have them repent of their sins, have them come before Jesus, have them give their lives to Jesus, you've got to almost, you know, it's almost like having to do that for each one of the individual altars because each one of the individual altars is essentially split off into its own person and they have to be able to remember that you know that that altar exists that altar has to come forth in their persona okay and they have to even remember that the altar exists because otherwise the demons of darkness control whether or not the altars manifest or not and that that's typically before the age of 37 uh you know and then at that time they don't even know all they know is that they've tried to commit suicide a whole bunch of times and all these are horrible terrible things have happened and they've tried you know and, and they're lucky to even be alive la 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 and this that and the other thing and then they start to wake up they start to have memories, and then once they get to a point where the Lord calls them, uh, you know, they can seek um, help, and then uh, a properly trained person who, uh, you know, understands SRADID knows how to, you know, talk to them, uh, work with them, and help them to recall, help their altars and the other soul room, you know, uh, uh, confined soul room altar personalities to uh, remember uh, things, and then they're able to confess of those things on an individual altar basis, you know, and and then um, and then each one of them gets delivered one by one, and it can be very long, to, you know, it can be time consuming. So you can cast out the demons in the core personality, because core is typically the personality that everybody sees when Aunt Sally comes over and brings her deviled eggs for the 4th of July, and everybody's sitting around, you know, shooting off some fireworks and having a good time. The core Core personality is the person that everybody knows him in. Oh, what a sweet, loving, kind uh, person that is. You know, what a nice person. Uh, praise God. And boy, oh boy, I can't believe my Fitbit just told me I got 10,000 steps today. That must have been from mowing the lawn and doing all the work I was doing today. Holy moly, moly, moly. Praise God. But anyway, um, uh, you know, and and so everybody sees them as being this loving, kind, wonderful person, which they are. Which they are. And so when I pray for folks that have been, you know, so abused, I always go before the courts of heaven in my prayers and I raise a cup of forgiveness on to the courts uh, up to the our father. And I ask him to pour out the golden cup of forgiveness upon them and do a search on cup of. OK, do a search on the words cup of quote, quote, 
cup of, quote, cup of, throughout the Bible. You'll be amazed at how many times, cup of salvation, cup of this, cup of that. Uh, so uh, there are so many people that are like, where did you get that phrase? Well, it's, you know, guess what? Look in your Bible. But anyway, um, so, uh, and I also go before the courts and I raise a motion before the uh, the holy and divine justice of all the universes, our Heavenly Father, I raise a motion before the courts that God would recognize before the courts, before Hasatan, who was the persecutor of that individual, I raise a motion before the courts, and I say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as a royal priesthood, First Peter 2, 9, I raise a motion before a, a motion and a petition before the courts of heaven that you, Father God, would forgive each one of those altars because this person acted as a victim on Hasatan, the chief prosecutor. He, they were victims of the devil. They were victims of Satan. And I beseech thee, Father, and raise a motion before the courts of heaven that you will have him be seated. Praise Jesus. And then I ask the Lord to forgive them of their sins. Uh, and then I go after the strong man, casting them out, go after the subordinate demons, casting them out of each one of the altars, each one of the soul rooms, and then um, call down a holy fire to, and a whirlwind of the Holy Spirit to swirl around about each one of them that nothing unclean may reenter the clean swept house. Now, uh, but anyway, uh, so it's fascinating to have been through all these things and, and to have been blessed by experiencing all these things. And um, and we all need to just be thankful that we have been exposed to these things and pray that the Lord will continue to massage our inner being to continue to help us to be able to understand the complexities of the dynamics of the kingdom and how these things work that are so, so, so far beyond our ability with our tiny little peanut brains to be able to understand myself included to be able to understand these things and to be able to receive them if you can receive it we all want to be able to step past drinking milk we all want to be able to get past uh that 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 cage that cage of our own free will and our own personal fears our inability to be able to discern uh because we you know we're we're what for whatever reason for whatever reason and uh, an example of that in regard regard to how we treat our fellow Christians and how we think about people who wreck their big gigantic corporate jets uh even though they are you know evangelical Christian pastors uh you know whatever the case may be you know we got to get past that that thing where we're judging them you know uh, I know it's so hard and I know it's so hard I know it is I know it is but we got to and it seems like a double standard but guess what it is a double standard Wow. Imagine that our Heavenly Father would have a double standard. You know, double standards are frowned upon here in the earthly realm, here in the, in the, in the place where the Satan ultimately rules, the prince of the air, uh, you know, of the earth, you know, even, be, even to the point where he was able to take Jesus, uh, you know, during the temptation period in the, you know, in the desert and offer Jesus the kingdoms of the world. And if you will only bow to me... Uh, I will give you, you know, rule and reign over all of this, you know, pointing to the kingdoms of the earth. Now, why would Satan be able to do that if he wasn't ultimately in control of all these, uh, you know, kingdoms on the earth? Well, he is in control, essentially, of those to the extent within the sandbox that God draws around about him. Job 1, verse 9, um, uh, and all of Job 1, really, but Job 1, verse 9 is extremely telling, uh, you know, and then you you would uh, then you sort of start you, oh, you're like oh okay I get it but when you when you do get it it's really helpful because it helps you to be able to effectively much much more effectively pray okay and that was another thing that I covered on the last uh, this last Friday night's prayer vigil uh, the Lord I don't know why. I really don't even know why, but for some reason, the Lord was saying to me, you need to talk about combat in the heavenly realm. You need to, you need to re, reread combat in the heavenly realm, how Satan stops our prayers. Okay, and uh, I was like, okay, and I took a post-it note, and I wrote it down to remind myself, uh, and I did. I did, and uh, it, was, it, wasn't e it wasn't easy because I have one of those swirly, whirly minds uh, that, that, you know, jumps from one idea to another, and, you know, it, it's, it, but anyway, it's just, you know, and, 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 uh, um, and, and, but the Lord kept on 
pushing me and nudging me. And I, I went back and I covered the entire topic. Praise God. And we even got to pray for the lands, Ezekiel 2230, uh, as intercessors uh, on behalf of the lands of Oceania. Praise Jesus. Using the tactics of going before the courts of heaven, which amplifies the power. The effective, fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much. Okay, well, wouldn't you rather have your prayers avail a lot more than just much? Well, then they need to be more effective. Praise Jesus. James 5.16b, praise his holy name. Uh, But most people will not receive it. But that's okay. One of the things that the Lord revealed to me is that those who do not receive the things that, you know, the advanced mysteries or whatever the case is, I'm not saying I got them all. I I don't. I don't. I I can't even wait until the Lord reveals the next one to me. I pray that he does. Uh, You know, I, I, you know, and um, uh, I always want to receive more. Uh, First Corinthians 8, 2, if anyone thinks they know anything, they know nothing yet as they ought to know. Uh, But, uh, but it's hard. Because we live in a time that we live in the, the days of the Stanley Fraudrum prophecy, where there were, you know, you know, uh, seducing spirits, First Kings twenty two nineteen, sent down upon the earth by by the bazillions uh, to ultimately mislead the prophets. Okay, and so we live in that period of time right now, where that where, where I would say nine out of ten prophecies are well, you better have squinty eyes. That's all I gotta say, and he, and that includes the really good prophets. That includes the really good prophets and the really, really good prophets that truly have the humility of Jesus Christ on their heart know that even their prophecies probably aren't 100 percent because, you know, we all see through the mirror dimly, uh, you know, uh, you know, we all prophesy in part. Praise God. The problem is that with the seducing spirits, first Kings twenty two nineteen, 19, uh, you know, uh, with the seducing spirits so pervasive, bazillions and bazillions and bazillions of them released by the throne room of God on purpose. Now, why would God? God do that. God does that for the for the same reason that second. I'm sorry. Yeah, Second Thessalonians two eleven b. The second half of Second Thessalonians two eleven. Why he says, I God send a strong delusion so that they be, will believe the lie. Well, there you have it. If God's sending the strong delusion. So that they, the unrighteous, will believe the lie. <clears throat> well, one of the things that I had a conversation, you know, we talked about, or uh, you know, I did a little dialogue about that'll be broadcast on the Peterson Chronicle show in much more detail on Saturday night, the sixth, I guess, uh, um, is this discussion about how our heavenly Father, um, uh, you know, we see that concept in the Holy Bible where uh, even you know that even the elect could be deceived. And you see Christians all the time holding that up. They're like, well, you know, this is going to be so bad that even the elect could be deceived. But oftentimes the people that are talking about that scripture don't really get it. Okay, they don't really get it. The reality is that many of the elect shall be deceived. Okay, that's the therein lies again a mystery of the understanding of the timeline of the end times uh, 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 events that are about to unfold on the earth. I'm going to do a Paul Bagley moment here uh, in just a second because I want to have a, a sip of my coffee. Hold on. Hmm. Boy, that is really, really good. Whoa! Yep. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yes, I am, Pastor Paul. I am serious. And um uh but anyway, um the uh the the concept of first Kings twenty two nineteen, the concept of it, it here's the thing. We oftentimes look at a scripture and sometimes we just breeze over it and we're like bloop, 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 and we don't have no idea what it means. We just kind of breeze right past it, we don't think about it, we don't meditate upon it, we don't ask the hard questions. But in reality, you got to be able to, you know, these, for example, you've got these guys, there's at least two of them, probably more, that claim to have been taken to heaven, yet they talk to patriarchs, Joseph or whoever, in heaven. And they come back and supposedly Joseph in heaven tells one of them, and and an, another patriarch, I forget who, talked to the other guy, and there's more probably out there, I don't know, but I'm not going to mention their names. Hopefully you know who they are so you can steer a heart of port and get away before you get deceived and jump over the, you know, the cliff like a bunch of lemmings and, you know, end up where you should not have been. Now, here's the thing. If somebody is taken to heaven and, uh, you know, in theory, and then they talk to a patriarch like Joseph, 
And um, Joseph tells them that all these things are going to happen upon the earth. Here's what's going to happen in the future. Guess what? Warning, Will Robinson. That is not how it works. That should send like a total like, are you kidding me? Right through my spine. And why is that? It should because God has a divine order. God is not a God of confusion. He has a divine order. So he's not going to establish a divine order before he is you know, creates time and realms and, and all the things that he's created across multiple universes, multiple dimensions, trillion dimensions, trillions of life forms, all these things that have been around for billions of years that were and, and he, he puts establishes this divine and holy order. And then oh by the way, he bends the rules just a little bit. For this guy or these men uh, that have supposedly been taken to heaven and talked to Joseph or whoever, whatever patriarch of the Bible. And I'm like, it's fascinating to me when you listen to all the things that they say. While they got a whole bunch of stuff right, they got a whole bunch of stuff wrong. And when you understand that the Bible is very clear that God speaks through his servants, the prophets, Amos 3, 7, and through his angels, which are a class of angelic beings known as messenger class beings. That's what the term angel means. It doesn't have anything to to do with being blonde and floating around on a cloud and playing a harp. Okay, nothing to do with that. And they can incarnate into host bodies and they can uh, be men angels, just like the ones that went to Lot's house. And just like, you know, why it says in Hebrews, be careful who, you know, who you meet and entertain because you might unwittingly entertain an angel. Okay, well, I'm not unwittingly entertaining any angel that looked like the one that came down to to uh, to uh, Daniel with, you know, a face of lightning and eyes of barrel or, or a face of barrel and eyes like lightning that freaked him out so bad he threw himself on the ground. He was freaking out. He's panicking. Okay, you know what? I'm not having scrambled eggs with that dude. I don't know about you, but not me. I'm sorry. Pass the bacon that way. All right, I exit stage left. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get me out of here. All right. So exit stage left. So you know, anyway, but then there's been angels where the spirits are you know, and think about it. When what does it say about us? It says that when we go to heaven, we're gonna be in what? Spirit bodies. So then you go to first Kings twenty two nineteen and it says there are there's this pantheon of spirits. Well, what are they? They're minor gods, little g gods. For, uh, go back to uh, Psalm 82. You got to stitch it all together, and then you're like, you got this big smile on your face, and you're like, no way. This is so cool. A congress of beings that our Heavenly Father meets with and gets advice from. I mean, really, when you think about it, it is astonishing. And um, you're never going to hear this for your thirty nine ninety five for your 7 CD set on Revelation. From some theologian out there that's trying to, you know, uh, that doesn't want everybody to scamper out the back door while he's uh, trying to do his, uh, you know, his Sunday sermon. All right. Praise Jesus. That's one of the reasons why I have a bit of disdain for the brick and mortars church. All right. But when you go and you look at First Kings 22, 19, you really it opens up. It opens up this amazing, holy, this amazing, holy um grail of mysterious wonderment. But then Micaiah said, therefore, uh, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and the host of heaven the, and all the host of heaven standing by. Wow. Now that is a bunch. I mean, for real? Come on. And on his right hand, on his left. So they're all over the place. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So God, so you say, well, God knows the uh, the beginning from the end. He knows all. He knows every sand. He knows the count of the sands on the earth, you know, the, the beach and your every hair on your head and all that. Right. Well, he does. So then why in the universe would our heavenly father say to this pantheon of minor gods, um, uh, who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? Question mark. 
If that doesn't open up a can of worms the size of Texas, I don't know what should. But the problem is we just kind of blow right on past it. We never ask the hard questions. We never wonder why. But if you want to understand the mysteries of the Bible, you need to ask these tough questions because otherwise, why did God bother doing, allowing what happened to Job happen to him to open up, to help us, to teach us, to re, help us to understand how these dynamics work? God's will is that you have free will. That is why Solomon, who was hand chosen by God to be who he was, ultimately apostatized against God at the end of his life because God allows free will. But if he knows the beginning from the end, how is that allowed? Well, the problem is he knows the beginning from the end, but it's the soft and squishy middle part that he allows to be a variable. That's where he calls audibles. That's where he allows the devil to chasten us on his behalf. That's why uh, there is testing that occurs and things that happen in our lives to see how we're going to respond and ultimately bring us to that, by the way, expected end. I believe it's uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 or something like that. All right. Uh, you know, uh, I know, you know, I know the thoughts that I think about you, not thoughts of evil, but thoughts of good to bring you to an expected end. Why did it say to bring you to the end of which I have determined. Doesn't say that, does it? Oh, that's because God knows the beginning from the end, but there is a soft and squishy middle part that he, to make things interesting for the throne, across multiple universes and trillions of life forms and civilizations across all of the universes and, and realms and, and dimensions and everything, God makes, he wants this interaction. He wants you to want him. Okay, you know, um, and, and, he, and, he, and this is a part of the kingdom dynamics that were established before all of this stuff was put into place. Praise Praise Jesus. All right. Now, hallelujah. I hope this, uh, uh, you know, tinkled your, uh, t tantalized your taste buds a little bit. And maybe you'll take some time and go and listen to the uh, podcast after 8 p.m. It'll be available this Saturday night at, at 6 p.m. I, I was sharing that with you because I wanted to share it with you because it's really fascinating and super cool information. But at the same time, it explains a lot of things out there. It prevents you from throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, it allows you to be able to humbly and with a contrite spirit seek out uh, the, uh, the amazing mysteries of the Bible and hopefully be able to come to a much, much better understanding of these things that are going on all around about us and not sit there and go, well, that person's a false prophet or that's, you know, that's incorrect or that's incorrect or, you know, because I'm I'm telling you, Pastor Aaron Wagner saw Benny Hinn on his knees crying, crying his eyes out to Jesus behind the Todd White conference, uh, you know, behind the, the curtain of the of the main stage. He was actually backstage on his knees, crying to Jesus and repenting in tears. So remember, when the Bible says, judge not that ye be judged, and you're sitting there going, that guy's a bad guy. That guy's a bad guy. I'm passing YouTube videos all around on Facebook and telling everybody that that person's a bad person. What you going to say if that person repents? Well, Lord, I was just trying to protect people. And... But my Bible says, judge not that ye be judged. Come this way. Come with me. The Bible says, judge not that ye be judged. Follow me. Come into this room over here. We need to talk. I don't want to be one of those people. I want to be totally on the up and up with the Lord on every little thing, every little thing. I'm not perfect. Oh, man, I'm the opposite of perfect. I, you know, holding on to the bus bumper at the best, letting go sometimes, not on purpose, getting bounced in a pothole. But that's part of our walk, practicing righteousness, finding our way, keeping ourselves on that narrow path, path as best as we can, and never having the presumptuous sin of thinking that we are there, no matter what. Praise God. The B 
attitudes. That is the key. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. That is. Uh, so anyway, on that note, let's go ahead and go into the news because I'm going to bring on uh, Brother Jeff Byerly and Brother Linda Hashi uh, early. Now, I've looked at the clock and I'm running a little bit behind right now, so I'm going to move really fast through the news. But I want to get them on early as possible. We might go a couple of minutes after nine, but I want to bring them on as soon as possible because they have a ton of information to put out. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Here we go. It's not normal. It's just wrong. Uh, what? It's not normal. This is disturbing. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's just wrong. Uh, what? It's not normal. This is disturbing. All right, stand by. I have a problem uh, that I'm dealing with, and I I hate to have to deal with this, but I don't. There's no way around it. So hold on just a second. We have a uh, aberrant, nasty little naughty, naughty person in our chat room, and that person needs to repent because he's going to go to hell if he keeps on acting like he's acting. All right, so let me go ahead and try my best to uh, deal with this problem. It's uh, such a challenge. All right. Anyway, um, praise God. So um, I hope that person heard me say they're going to hell and fire burns. All right. Now, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, um, uh, anyway, I had to deal with that. It's it's fascinating how people – oh, gosh. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name. That you will move upon this person's mind, heart, spirit. If they are not a demonic entity, if they are savable, by the blood of Jesus, I pray that you will save their souls. Because people like this are doomed to burn in eternal fire forever if it is not for your grace and mercy. And we pray for that grace and mercy upon them. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And on that note, let's go ahead and hit the news. All right, praise God. Listen to this. Antifa conservative protest in Portland, Portland, Oregon, turned violent, assaulting police officers uh, and uh, uh, much, much worse. Okay, and so, so again, there are Antifa. By the way, if you follow that kind of stuff. The uh, the false flag Antifa events that are occurring all across the country that have been for many, many years are ramping up and they are much more. Uh, there's so many more of them now than there have been historically in the past. And by the way, there are also the people, the entities that are behind these things on a global level uh, are, are also behind the the uh, the, the color um, uh all, all the, you know, the yellow vests in France and all this other stuff, it is out of control and it is on a global level. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this headline. Praise God. All right. Integration or indoctrination. Video of Danish school kids chanting Alawa Akbar triggers debate. Triggers debate? Why doesn't it trigger protest in the streets? Why isn't every Christian out there bashing down the front door and crashing through there and going, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. We cast the devils out of you people. But no, no, you know, I know how it is. Not in a bad way, in a loving and aggressive way, perhaps. But, you know, although uh, Timothy uh, died, if you read the Fox's Book of Martyrs, he went out and got aggressive with some pagans in a parade outside of the Church of Ephesus and um, ended ended up. Um, uh, OK. Oh, isn't this wonderful? <laughs> you got to love it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Praise God. All right. So what, what I'm going to have to do here, thank you, Jesus, is, ah, here we go. All right. So anyway, um, praise Jesus. You know, devils are very um, disobedient. And when devils are controlling humans, they become very evil and disobedient. All right, listen to this headline. U.S.-China trade war may soon become a currency war, uh, strategists warn. And you know what? 
I disagree with this headline. I believe it's much worse than that. I believe that it already is and has been a currency war. Hello, whoever wrote this article. Look up the term BRICS, B-R-I-C-S. Okay, and also study who's buying gold from who and all that kind of stuff. That is very, very telling because guess what? They're, they're so totally ready to dump the petrodollar. And when the global financial collapse you know, occurs, uh, which is uh, Revelation uh, uh, 6, uh, the third seal, I really don't think I, um, uh, uh, um, China and uh, Russia will be affected very, very much. Okay. Now, they'll be affected, but I believe because they're hedging their bet and they are dumping the petro, they're already in the process of, you know, skirting around the petrodollar as much as they possibly can by establishing bricks, by buying gold. Uh, you know, uh, the countries that are awake and aware to the things that are about to befall the earth, uh, that are preparing themselves, as in the movie 2012 with my buddy Charlie Frost, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are, well, they're aware and they're pre- they are preparing. All right. Um, praise Jesus. Now, um, uh, so anyway, listen to this. Indian. All right. Hell, hallelujah. Indian military set to train to operate Russia's S-400s despite U.S. sanctions threat reports. Okay, so we have this. Okay, the India problem is extremely complicated from a global, uh, you know, and from a trade standpoint, from a visa standpoint, from an integration with American business standpoint. It is unbelievably complex. It is arguably in many ways just about as complex as the China problem is. Okay, so um, uh, so there's a much to do, much chatter, much, uh, you know, debate about the India situation. And I'm here to tell you, as somebody who has worked for some of the biggest global uh, IT companies in the world, information technology and services and consulting companies in the world, I'm here to tell you as a fact that India is deeply, they're not just in bed, folks. They are so deep in bed, they're like in your mattress, they're under your mattress, they're above the mattress, they're knocking on your door, they're everywhere. Okay, and so when when these things come out over the S-400 air defense system and Trump coming out and and doing executive orders and lifting special privilege programs that have been established by prior executive orders on behalf of India, that is, well, it's a big dagnabbit deal. And it is, yes, another catalyst toward World War Three, And they are a nuclear country. All right. And then, by the way, who's their neighbor? Right there to the north and to the, to the east. China. Praise God. All right. So anyway, um, uh, you know, uh, we're just, I think I'm just going to go ahead and permanently shut down the chat room uh, because I'm sick and tired of these, these wonderful people that um, just do not understand anything about, uh, uh, you know, getting um, – you know, uh, <laughs> ah, so the chat room has become a problem with the devils and the demons, and I, I may just go ahead and permanently close the chat room forever. Okay, that's okay, um, because you know what? It's just too bad. You know, as the darkness rises, and I've said this a bazillion times before, as the darkness continues to rise, things are going to happen in tribulation. Now, you know what? It's almost like um, Johnny Bab or uh, the real John Baptist said, "I must decrease so that he must increase." Now, that was more directly refer- referencing Jesus, but I would not be surprised as the uh, evil increases across the world. Many of the ministries that are internet-based, especially those who are preaching holiness and righteousness will be under such heavy attack or being filtered by the forces of darkness, the Google goblins, to an extent that it will be virtually impossible, if not completely impossible, for them to continue their ministries. Now then, what you're going to see is a bunch of Christians out there going, well, God judges the churches first, you know. And so they'll point to a lot of pe- folk, you know, ministries like Tribulation Now and many, many other ones that are out there uh, uh, that are, you know, uh, speaking the truth about, you know, the evil that is out. You know, I don't even want to get going because it'll just take me forever to cover all the subjects. But the problem is th- th- some of us are going to be disappeared. Some of us are going to be extraordinarily renditioned. Some of us are going to have to say bye-bye when the helicopter uh, lands in our front yard. Some of us are going to be met with a big black uh, you know, SUV in the front of our houses. 
there there is a red and blue list. There are FEMA camps. All the, the the southern wall is for containing people in the United States so they can have more blood to drink when they're cutting people's heads off. And it will be persecution upon Christianity in this country on a level and other countries too. New Zealand, watch out. Australia, watch out. Europe, watch out. Although Europe is less threatening because they have less of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to be like, oh, no, you can't say that about Europe. Why? We have just as much Holy Spirit as anyone. Well, yes, kind of, but here's the problem. Pervasively across, uh, you know, predominantly across Europe, you've got more of that Roman Catholic influence, you know, the Church of England, all that kind of stuff, and blah, 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 blah and all that. And unfortunately, that there's more Protestant what 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 the Holy Spirit filled church people refer to as dead churches in Europe as ever before. So you're far far less of a threat to Satan than churches that have a chance of becoming set on fire by the presence of the Holy Spirit. They may be ignorant as a box of rocks right now, but given the right catalyst, given enough shaking of the earth, given enough you know uh, warnings, uh, they can wake up and become. Well, a real problem, a thorn in the flesh for Satan himself. Hallelujah. All right, listen to this headline. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I, I got, I've got myself to the point where I actually like that sound, that warning. Anyway, France vows to continue patrols in the South China Sea, risking provoking Beijing's fury. Love it. Praise Jesus. The more, the merrier. All right, listen to this headline. Arrest violence as far-right demonstrators counter-protesters clash in Portland, Oregon. Again, we uh, double, double dip on that one. Violence in the DRC, Democratic Republic of the Congo, faces uh, thousands to face uh, fleeing to Uganda, okay, or, U- or Uganda, okay, and the situation, that, that's the tip of the iceberg. Africa is on fire with things that are happening there. It is unbelievable. Listen to this headline, Glory to God. U.S. and North Korea agree to restart nuclear talks, but Trump is in no rush to ditch the san- sanctions, and they're making, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that all over the news, all you see th- today uh, is uh, this whole thing about Trump walking into the demilitarized zone and hanging out and high-fiving Kim Jong-un. I'm like, oh, Jiminy Crickets. And, oh, it's, oh, it's a, it's, it's a world, it's a, it's a historical event such as never been seen since Adam and Eve. Really? Wow. I mean, give another glass of Belize Kool-Aid to the evangelical Christians. Shan't we? As a matter of fact, crank up the riptide so more people can be sucked out to sea so that they are not ready for sudden destruction. Oh, boy. Praise God. Next up, Palestinians, 95 wounded in the East Jerusalem, clashes over the weekend. Palestinian rioters hurl rocks and launch explosives at Israeli uh, forces. And you're like, well, that happens all the time. What's apocalyptic about that? No, it's not that alone. It is that in context with all the things that are happening on a global level. Don't even get me going on Hong Kong. All right, which is, you know, and Venezuela. And let's not forget the Koreas and and all the other places. And and, oh boy, if if we went through every single country, in Indonesia and every single country in Africa and every single country in parts of Europe that are absolutely on fire with protest. Don't even get me going on the 140, no, 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 114 degree temperatures that are going to be hitting France in a couple of days. Are you kidding me? France is not able to deal with 114 degrees. Do you realize that nobody has air conditioning over there? 114 degrees. And by the way, I looked on Amazon over in the European countries more than once. And they don't sell um, window air conditioners. They don't sell them. Oh, by the way, anybody out there who wants to be an entrepreneur and has a little bit of money in the bank and is properly tithing to the Lord and can pray, uh, that's a great business opportunity. Selling window air conditioners in Europe right now. He would be very wealthy very soon. But remember, give your money, give your money uh, 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 in Jesus' name. Give your money to the Lord uh, first and foremost. Okay? All right. Hallelujah. Uh, All right. Thank you, Jesus. 
All right. Now, Mary Lee, I'm going to ask you uh, – uh, hold on a second. Um, PL, do not TXT me any more on this. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Trump makes history as he crosses into North Korea and speaks great friendship to Kim Jong-un. Another headline. Hong Kong prepares for pro-democracy march amidst extradition bill anger. This is still going on. Millions of people in the streets. It is unbelievable. Listen to this. Heat wave cooks mussels in their shells along a 150-mile stretch of Northern California. Northern California. Northern California. This is not happening in India. This is not happening in France. This is not happening in some other weird Pakistan country or whatever the case may be. This is in California cooking seafood in their shells. Oh boy, folks, wait until the wildfire starts. It's unbelievable. Listen to this headline Hell on Earth, and now wildfires rage out of control after continental Europe rocked by record 45.9 degrees Celsius, which is 114 degrees Fahrenheit. Yikes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Unbelievable. Southern France. Another headline. U.S. deploys F-22 stealth fighters to cut cutter as tensions with Iran surge. Nothing has slowed down. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Nothing has slowed down. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Please, please try to remember it took two entire years for the United States evil government from the bowels of Sheol, the pentagram, to punt, pump enough military forces over into the Middle East to do Operation Desert Storm. Two years before George W. Bush got to lie, la 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 la, like he always did his shape-shifting reptilian self, lying to everybody and saying, "Well, you know, we have we have a victory here in Iran or in Iraq." <laughs> Please, oh, please, somebody just open up the top of my skull and scrape out the gray matter with a shrimp fork for crying out loud. How dumb can people be? But you know what? It's amazing. We, you know, it, when you think about it, you know, what's really scary is how incredibly gullible. No wonder Jesus referred to us as sheep. Let's just pray that we are humble. We have contrite spirits and hearts. We are seeking God and seeking our own salvation with fear and trembling. And we at least understand walking in a continuous state of confession of our sins and love. Because if we don't, oh my, 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 things are going to get ugly. All right, praise Jesus, hallelujah. Listen to this, France endures its hottest day ever as Europe swelters in a heat wave. And that's speaking, that is really just, doesn't really capture the situation. It's deadly. People are dying. Three people, I think it was three people, died on the beach. They were out sunbathing. The sun got hotter and hotter, and they didn't know they fell asleep on the beach, and they're dead. Dead. All right? I mean, that is how bad the situation is out there. Praise Jesus. All right. Um, uh, uh, Thank you, Father. So anyway, um, we just thank you, Father, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at uh, – uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, the, the headlines are out of control. It's out of control. Uh, missiles fire – listen to this. American missiles found in Libyan rebel compound. American missiles found in Libyan rebel compound. Can you imagine that? American missiles found in Libyan rebel compound. I mean, really, when you think about that, that is just absolutely amazing. All right, praise God. All right, listen to this. American corn farmers have their worst year yet in recent histories. And by the way, this is the tip of the iceberg. It is a wipeout. All right, relief in sight for France. Again, they're talking a lot about France because France is going to hit world record 44.1 degrees Celsius uh, and higher. And um, and they're talking about it so much, it's on so many different headlines because it is indeed a world record. Never before in the world has it been that bad in France. Okay, praise God. All right, now again, House passes border funding bill after Pelosi reverses out out outrages and progress uh, outrages progresses. Now, uh, why? Because we're getting closer to the election. And she, as evil as she is, she knows, and we should pray for her, uh, we, she knows that it's popular because, well, the population of America is evil, <laughs> right? And so if they're not Christian, 
this isn't a Christian country any more than, you know, I'm not even going to get into it. It's just unbelievable. Uh, fly your flags behind your pulpits, pastors. Go ahead. See it to beam a judgment seat. All right. Another headline. No, that's not dirt. It's a swarm of mayflies and invaded Ohio. You should see the, he- the actual photographs of these things. It is beyond belief. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right. Um, th- it looks like somebody bank- backed up a pickup truck or or no worse, a dump truck and dumped sand on top of these vehicles. These are dead mayflies. And th- it's never been this bad. And, uh, and it's, it's not just the mayflies. It's the Zika mosquitoes and it's everything else. And the Marlborough uh, diseases and the, and the various permutations and the newer uh, versions of Ebola that are out there. And, oh, my gosh, and the strains and the people dying more. Uh, and listen to this headline. Catalonia wildfires in Spain in 20 years, uh, worse than, than in 20 years, are, 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 are uh, uh, in, in, in action right now over 5,500 hectares of land forcing people to evacuate and killing animals. New York City declares climate emergency, the first United States city with more than a million residents to do so. Climate emergency. The list goes on. All right, praise God. Now, pray for pray for this guy if he's even human. I don't even know if he's human. I don't know, but just go ahead and pray anyway for them. But I can't believe this. Are you ready to ex- expletive party tonight? Joel and Victoria Olstein attend a Lady Gaga concert and pose for a serious Pandora merger. This was um, uh, uh, published on the internet by Christian News. All right. And I'm like, you know, I know, I know if you look into Olstein and all that kind of stuff, you're like, oh my gosh, this can't be true. This guy is definitely going to hell. But you know what? But our hearts should remember that he may repent at the last minute, just like with Benny Hinn. So we got to pray. Don't judge. Just pray. That's the only reason I'm bringing this out there. Lift them up in prayer. Another headline, Tehran warns U.S. will get even stronger, uh, uh, warns the United States of America, they're warning us, that they will get even a stronger reaction if it violates Iran's airspace again. By the way, Russia said that that drone was intentionally moved into their airspace. They saw it on their radar. Who do you believe? I know who I believe. All right, listen to this. You will burn, according to this headline, sick ISIS supporters threaten to bomb London and New York and, and attack a plane in chilling terror posters. And by the way, there are implications that it's going to happen over the 4th of July weekend. Uh, you know, again, temperature records are melting away in Miami. Uh, Europeans on alert as heat waves uh, intensify. Uh, Czech Republic, uh, Poland, Switzerland, Austria, heat waves. People are dying. It's unbelievable. Uh, they're driving trucks through the squares of the various countries, you know, and, 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 you know, by their government buildings and spraying water on people so they can get a break. It's unbelievable. Listen to this. Straight Pride Parade. Straight Pride Parade for straight people that, you know, behave as they ought. They're having a Straight Pride par- Parade in Israel. It has come to the place the point in time where things are so as in the days of Noah, minus the giants roaming the streets and eating people, uh, that they have straight pride parades. Okay, I've had enough of this. Let's go ahead and bring on uh, brother Jeff Byerly and uh, uh, sister Linda Hashi. I've already gone over longer than I wanted to. Praise Jesus. Let's go. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, wait a minute. Okay. I see one of them. All right. I believe this is Brother Jeff. Jeff. Yep. I'm here. All right. Praise God. Now, I'm having trouble finding Linda. I don't see her online at all. Um, Uh Uh-oh. I wonder if she could be calling in. Does she have a 712 number, Jeff? Oh, boy. You know what? If she changed her phone, I'm in trouble. Uh, let me look here. Hold on a second, please. Because the number I have for her is area code 417, and I'm not seeing it on the call doc at all. 712. Yeah, 712 area code. Yep. She has that. Okay, I don't have that in my, yeah. uh, I don't have that in my contact manager at all. Hold on a second. Let me see if this is her. Linda, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? 
Yes, yes. Hello. I don't have your 712 number at all in my call uh, manager, so I had no idea that was you. Praise Jesus. I'm glad I have you both on. Oh. Let me shut up. Yeah, yeah, amen. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't see any. Blog Talk Radio is very limited, and all you see is a whole pantheon of numbers. And so if you don't know that magical number, you're dork. I mean, all you can do is bring somebody on and let them say, F bomb you, F bomb you. And then you're like, oh, this is a great show. Praise Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, I'll go ahead and let you guys uh, take over the mics now and take a little bit of uh, chill uh, right. to back. Amen. Right. Thank you for joining um, us. Can you hear me okay? I broke my back. Yes, headset. very well. Perfect. Yeah, really okay. good. Okay, praise God. All right. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, Jeff and I both have quite a bit to share, and I did not understand these two new dreams that I had received earlier in the month, why they coincided with what Jeff had. It just didn't make sense to me until today. So as we're sharing, I think the Holy Spirit is also going to give more to us. So even though we're both on here, I'm kind of waiting to see what the Holy Spirit can say to with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. He's going to start, and then we'll kind of tag team. So praise God. Jeff, you want to say a prayer, and then it's all on you yeah, now. Yeah, I, I definitely want to say a prayer because, you know what, the enemy does not like what we're about to say because we're revealing his plans. So, uh, and, you know, it's very evident with the guy that was in the chat room making a big rigmarole or whatever. And I pray that that guy repents if he's just a demon-controlled human and he can repent, like John said. So, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now in the, the holy, precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And, Lord, I just want to surrender what is going to be said in the rest of this show to you. Lord, let everything that me and Linda um, say in your name be um, what you want to be have put out to the people so that they are warned, so that they will... Um, grow closer to you in these perilous times in which we live, Lord, and that they it, they would hear and see and understand and perceive in their spirit the things that you want them to hear and see and understand. And, Lord, we know that you are powerful enough to touch each and every one that is listening tonight, including me and Linda and Johnny. And, Lord, we just love you, and we thank you for this time that we have. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So, well, you know, it's been an interesting, what, month and a half since we've been on, and the Lord has really been speaking um, a lot of different stuff to us, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, first of all, I want to address uh, one, a couple things. Um, the Lord has had me as of uh, the f- 1st of June. I am not posting on Whistleblower Jeff anymore. He's leading me. He led me into something different. And now I'm one of those crazy YouTubers that Johnny always talks about, you know. Um, And let me tell you something. (laughs) I did not want to be on YouTube at all. I really can't stand to hear my own voice and, and watch my face. (laughs) <laughs> as I'm talking on YouTube, but I guess some people do it just for the kicks of, uh, for some humor in their lives. I don't know. But, uh, you know, there's, I think uh, the Lord is really using it. There's, there's some new people that I think are 
hearing my messages from the Lord that that hadn't heard them before, which is the whole reason why he had me do it. So um, praise God. You know, uh, you know, he has given us the technology of this day that we have right now to use for his purposes for as long as we can. And I know that soon all this is going to be over. And you know what? Praise God, because I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm tired of the warning. <laughs> uh, but it's when the Lord's perfect timing is that everything will happen and not before it. The the enemy would love to come and steal and kill and destroy and, and do everything before the Lord's time, but uh, Father God is powerful enough not to allow that. So, But we know and we see it coming, and he has spoken to both of me and Linda that it is coming, and it's coming now. We can already see the start of it. So, saying that, I'm going to start with a message that I received over six days in May, uh, May 11th through the 17th, and I'm going to just start reading it. This is for all with eyes to see and ears to hear. War has come and will come in an ever increasing greater intensity, sorry, in an ever greater intensity. War will not be turned back now for it is time. Do not be confused by those pro- proclaiming false peace for war must come. It is written. The enemy knows that It is written even better than most of you do. And he will do all that I allow him to. He will be used to try the world and even most of my people. He knows his time is short. This is the time of the separation between the wheat and the tares. The righteous will shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The evil plans of Babylon the Great are going, are being allowed to go forward now. Do not be deceived by the things you read and hear. Everything is not as it seems. Deception is at every turn. America, your leaders have taken you down the wide path that leads to destruction, and most of you don't even know it. And even if you did, most of you would not even care as long as you can keep their, as long as they can keep their easy lifestyle of greed and excess in the land of plenty. This all soon shall soon end. Strong is the God who judges you. America, I no longer fight for you or protect your military endeavors and conquests. You have had your way with the weaker nations of the world, but that is ending. The nations you seek to control now are backed by the ones who will unseat you from your throne, O Queen of Nations. Your deceitful ways have been uncovered, and you will be stripped naked for all to see. Your false flags only fool the blind and deaf in your own nation, but your enemies see the truth, and they will have their way with you. America, there is no coincidence concerning the names of the ships Abraham Lincoln and Ronald Reagan. They will suffer the same fates as their namesakes. I think I'm going to read that again because the Lord has spoken to me many times about this. America, there is no coincidence concerning the names of the ships, Abraham Lincoln and Ronald Reagan. They will suffer 
the same face as their namesakes. When you see this, you will know that I what all that I have spoken is true and the complete destruction is coming to a once to the once greatest nation of all. You will become lowest of all because you have turned your back on me, your first love. And I think that is all I'm going to read off of that one. The Lord has spoken to me now four times about the Abraham Lincoln going down. And since I received that word in in May, um, there's like a dozen other people, other prophets, other people that hear from the Lord that have gotten words about the Abraham Lincoln going down. So we need to take heed of this because it is going to happen. Um, I'm going to read now a word that uh, entitled the only thing that will be great again about America will be her fall because she has forsaken me. And this was released on June 3rd. And uh, let's start reading about halfway through. Save a little, a little time. Uh, yes, all, uh, well, he, he was listing in the first part of the word all the calamities and judgments that are coming. And yes, these will even touch you, America. You are not above reproach. You will be hardest hit. You have fallen into the greatest sin of all, and you love it. You once knew me, but you have fallen away. That which is holy, that which is holy and good, and you despise my correction. I warned you over and over by my prophets and watchmen, especially over the last ten years, but you are not listening to me. You have been defeated by the chaotic noise from the God of this world who most love even if they don't know it. I have tried to warn you with my still small voice, but that time is ending. My merciful judgments will shake America and the world to the very core in my last pleas for repentance from the wickedness and sin. I warn you again, America, disaster and calamity comes quickly for you. After the Abraham Lincoln goes down in flames, you will be embroiled in conflict. So will the tower that bears the name of Donald Trump, and thus he will meet his demise during the fiery kickoff event. As I have told you before, Donald Trump is Belshazzar. He will be slain, and America will be given to the Medes and Persians, which is modern-day Iran and parts of the surrounding countries. But there are also Medes and Persians um, hidden away inside Of America right now and they are just waiting for the for whatever this the signal to attack probably God's hand when it's lifted they they're going to attack after the fire kickoff event the most severe judgment on America begins most will not understand that this has been planned for years and now the stage has been set and all the players are in place. War on America will come on every front and internally. Muslim jihad and civil war will come simultaneously 
with fi- financial ruin, martial law, famine, disease, as well as earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, volcanoes, and then nuclear destruction and even destructions from aliens, which are the fallen ones and their weapons that most don't even take into account. And we're going to touch on that a little bit more later. Then my wrath shall be poured upon you, O Babylon the Great, a fireball that you don't see be coming because it's from me. This will end the seal judgments, and my sealed servants will be transformed and be sent out to the harvest to all those who would receive me as the Savior. During all of this, Obama will be welcomed back to lead America, and most will put their trust in him, and he will promise peace and protection but bring chaos and destruction. How foolish they will be found to be. How utterly foolish is it to trust in man instead of me. He will absolutely do what his father does best. Steal, kill, and destroy. All the time smiling and lying. He will finally be allowed to accomplish his objective. As he departs America, yeah, I should rephrase it the way I said that. As he departs, America will be attacked from the north. She, while she is in total disarray and unable to defend herself. This is the final destruction in one hour by fire of Babylon the Great. The only thing that will be great, again, about America will be her fall because she has forsaken me. Even in this, I seek repentance of each individual soul, national Repentance will not take place. Judgment has been set. You know not the abundance of tears that I have shed for you, but you have refused me. And I put in brackets that I felt his deep pain and sorrow, and I do even now. Children, there is very small amount of time left to surrender to me before this comes to pass. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Luke twenty-one thirty-six. And I think I'll end the reading of this one now because it's almost at the end of the end. Um, and then I wanted to read, uh, I got an email from a gentleman named David Jones Sr. After the explosion at the, uh, refinery in Philadelphia and the Lord had spoke to him, um, that, after this refine you know this explosion the the kickoff event would happen so we have now passed that marker and uh you can read that on my blog uh, it's called urgent warning false flag alert if you wanted to read the whole thing um this this man was led to um, a video that Mike 444 had done of a word that I had received um, from back in October of 2017, which I'm going to be reading um, after Linda reads uh, one of her messages. 
because it goes together with what she's been told. Um, but uh, here again, I want to read the words that the Lord gave me um, after I received the email from David Jones. Um, so this is what he said. Another marker in time has passed before the fiery kickoff event. Will you not come to me with your whole heart now? That is what I require. Everything. You have nothing that I have not given you. I gave you my all on the cross, and I suffered and died for your sins, both physically and spiritually, so that you could would never have to experience spiritual death. I tell you the truth, some, but not all of you reading this, will not even will not taste of even physical death. But most of mo but most will and some will experience spiritual death because they did not heed my warning. There is no more delay. All things will happen according to my order given in the scripture and to my true modern day prophet. Once again, I tell you, watch for the Abraham Lincoln to be struck with fire and end as its namesake. Then you will know for certain that the fiery kickoff event will occur. Use this little time that is left to seek me while I may be found. I don't want you to be lost. I made you and I love you more than you you will ever know. And Jesus, I believe, was in tears when he spoke this. The end of the age is here and soon there will be no more chances. Choose to stay who you will serve. Today is the day of salvation. No one is promised tomorrow. You have been given free will. You can accept me or reject me, but I promise you that your best possible outcome is choosing me. I am the way, the truth, and the only real, true, full life. All other ways lead to death and everlasting destruction. Your creator, your savior, your first love, and your judge, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. All right, and I'm going to read one more, My the one that the Lord has been giving me over the last three weeks. This was kind of um, a different one for me. Um, I don't, it, it's a dream. I don't usually... Received dreams. I, I very rarely remember my dreams at all, but when I do have them, I, most of the time, it's it's God speaking something either personally to me or, in this case, He's speaking to um, the body of Christ and all who will listen. So, um, I might. I think I'm gonna go ahead and publish this right now, but don't go and re- don't go and read it just yet, because I'll read it to you. We don't want you to go anywhere and and miss Linda. So, um, the title of this is Dream Interpretation. And word, bank on fire. All right, so here here we go. Um, three weeks ago, um, which I approximate at June 8th, I'm not really sure 100% on the date of that. Um, I had a dream that I didn't really understand at first, so I prayed about it. I don't usually get dreams that I remember, so when I do, that in itself is significant. 
The Holy Spirit confirmed to me that it was a warning dream that was given to me to share with those in the body of Christ. In the original dream, I saw a bank, not a skyscraper, but a large building with quite a few offices. Similar to the picture above, which if you go to my blog, holyspiritwind.net, you can see the picture that I'm talking about. Then I saw a semi-tractor trailer tanker truck, exactly like the ones that fill up gas stations, pull up next to the bank, and I thought that was very odd. And I didn't write this in the post, but I work for an oil company here in Jamestown, New York, and um, tanker trucks don't pull up next to banks ever. (laughs) They go to gas stations. Now, me personally, I uh, deliver to farmers and uh a lot of Amish people running their sawmills and furniture factories and whatnot. Um, they kind of uh, use uh, diesel and gas-powered engines, some of them, but mostly diesel-powered engines to, to run and power their um, things uh, so that they can make things for people to buy. And, uh, yeah, probably... Over well, well over half of my customers are Amish, so they're good people. Anyways, where was I? So yeah, the the semi was pulled up next to the bank, and I saw quite a few people who I had. Wait a minute. Next, I saw quite a few people who I had just a knowing of being banking executives in expensive suits sneaking out of the building. Just as the last one of these bankers got to a safe distance, there was a huge explosion and the dream was over. So you can see that the original dream was not a very easy one to interpret, really. But I knew that the Lord was going to give me more about it, and he did. But I did not get the interpretation of this dream until um, the 28th of June. And and then he gave me more on the 29th and more even this morning along with some added flash visions during my morning prayer time and worship. He does things in his own time, and we must not try to rush him or run ahead of him, because that is when we try to do things in our own strength and or knowledge. That is called walking in the flesh. But to hear and or see what the Holy Spirit is doing We must be walking in the spirit or yielding control of our body, soul, and spirit to the Lord Jesus Christ by dying to our flesh daily. If you would like to read more about this, I would suggest you read Romans 8 and Galatians 5. So when I totally surrendered this dream and laid it at the feet of Jesus, then he gave me the added visions that I needed along with the interpretation and a message that he wants to speak to all of us. Okay. The first flash vision that was added I had was about the semi-tractor-trailer tanker truck. The driver of the truck hooked the delivery hose to the underground storage tank Um, and walked away. While the driver's back was turned, a max man disconnects the hose from the tank, and it starts dumping thousands of gallons of gasoline all 
around the outside of the bank. Then I saw in a second flash vision a masked man holding a lit match and he threw it on the gasoline over all over the ground and all at once the entire building was on fire. These masked men may be members of ISIS or some other terrorist organization or someone who looks like one of them, like Russian Spesnaz or even some group that I am not aware of. The building was not totally destroyed, but it was very badly damaged. Now, this is the interpretation that the Lord has given me for, um, so that we can put all of this together. The bank represents the current financial system with the American dollar as the world reserve currency that has been in place since the inception of the petrodollar in 1974 by President Richard Nixon and Secretary of State Henry Kissinger with the Saudi royal family, who were the most powerful member of OPEC, which stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And it's no coincidence, John, that you mentioned this earlier in the show. I'm like, dude, you're stealing my fire. But I didn't tell you what my dream was about, so. That's cool. Confirmation. That was only a coincidence, man. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> That's right. They happen all the time. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean darn thing. And pe- people say that there's no such thing as a Hebrew word of uh, for coincidence. Well, <laughs> I'm just joking, people. Anyways. All right. So. When they made the petrodollar, this took America off of the gold standard, also called the Bretton Woods Agreement. And I put a link um, that you can click and read all about that in my blog. And force every um oil importing nation in the world to buy american dollars to buy oil the semi tractor trailer fuel tanker represents the swift system that delivers currency to the current banking system the gasoline itself is representative of the petrodollar that fuels the current banking system When the delivery hose is disconnected and spills all over the ground, it represents countries that are bypassing the petrodollar, like bricks, like John said, and using their own system of four transactions. The masked man who throws the lit match represents the USS Abraham Lincoln getting struck by fire and sinking. The bankers and the wealthy know that this is coming because this is part of the New World Order plan to bring in the new financial system, which will be the B system. The fire and explosion on the buildings represent a huge downturn in the economy of America and war with Iran. The current banking system involving the petrodollar will not come down all the way at this point, but it will be severely weakened. The fiery kickoff event will damage it even more. There will be many natural cataclysms that will bring the American county, uh, economy down as well. It will come down all the way. It will not. Oh, I need to put not. It will not come down all the way until after the sixth seal 
great earthquake caused by an asteroid strike in the Caribbean, as seen by Efrain Rodriguez. And then Russia and China will attack and invade America, and all her major cities will be burned to the ground. Now, this is the word that the Lord gave me this morning about all of this. My children, you are the only ones listening to me right now. Please take this message very seriously. The world is preoccupied with their own microcosm of life. I will allow the things that I have told you about now to get their attention so that they would look to me and cry out to me. Some will turn to me, but most will not, and they will harden their hearts and stiffen their necks even more towards me. There have been many deceiving spirits and false prophets sent out amongst my people to tell them that everything is going to be fine for now, and they that you have years to prepare, but this is utterly untrue. Some uh, of the judgment has already come upon you, America, but there is much more coming because there is no repentance in the land. Look to the middle of your country, America. Your crops have failed to be planted. Food shortages and famine are coming to the land of plenty. And I know John mentioned this earlier, too. The explosion at the refinery in Philadelphia was the beginning of what is to come as well. More and even larger refineries will be taken out, and your transportation system will come to a screeching halt as the price of fuel food, and everything else skyrockets. And I just want you to know that the uh, refinery in Philadelphia was the um, largest refinery on the East Coast. So it's, you know, that in itself is going to raise the price of gasoline. And uh, I know... Like I mentioned before, I work for an oil company. My boss's wholesale price since this has happened has gone up about 30 cents a gallon. Now, if you live on the West Coast or maybe in the middle of the country, it hasn't affected you, um, but I live on the East Coast. So, um, all right, let's get back to the word of the Lord. Um, This Will this will be multiplied even more because the fall of the petrodollar. It is converging upon you now, America. You are going to crash and burn in one hour. I have spoken this many times to many of my messengers, and it will come to pass, for you are Babylon the Great. To all who would listen and see, you must seek me now with all of your heart so that I strengthen your body, soul, and most importantly, spirit for what is about to happen. Everything that I have told my prophets is about to come to pass, both good and bad, not only in America, but the whole world. There is no place that will escape my judgment except where my holy children are located. My blessings are upon them. The darkness is rising, but the light is rising as well and will overcome the darkness, but there can be no darkness found in you, my remnant bride. Your garments must be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, washed to sparkling white, in my blood that was shed. You will shine for me, and I will show my mercy in the judgment as I empower you to do the mighty miracles 
never before seen upon the earth, before I bring you home to be with me forever. The first part of judgment on America is through the door, and the rest comes quickly. You will see it happen with your own eyes and know that you have been warned. Be filled with my oil that I give freely, and my supply never runs dry. Ask of me, and I will give to all those who desire me more than anything or anyone else, and you will overflow and touch others with my love. Jesus, Yeshua. And with that, um, Linda, I will turn it over to you. All Unless right. No. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Johnny, you got my music? Wait, one more thing here. More. That's Mary Lee. She she didn't pass anger management courses we sent her to. <laughs> yeah, thanks for playing that. I asked uh, Johnny to play that before I, I spoke, Jeff. I, I texted him that because my stuff can be kind of out there. Um, I just started, I just like gave into it. Okay, Lord. All right, part of me is, uh uh-oh, here we go again. And then the other part of me is like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Too bad I don't have anybody around here I can talk to about it. So praise God, um, to whom all blessings flow. Before I start sharing mine, I just want to encourage everybody, fear not, fear not, fear not. Trust in the Lord. He loves us. The reason he's giving these things, to those who have ears to hear and, and eyes to see or those who are at least seeking truth but may not know, it's because he loves us. And when you see these things, you'll remember that he said this is coming and you'll rely on him. Because the things that are going to unfold, none of us are ready for, none of us. Even those of us that have been shown like the, the movie script of it, we're not going to be ready either. Only the power and presence of the Lord will be able to sustain any of us. With that, I'm going to go into this dream. Oh, before I do that, I also was called away to to be quiet before the Lord. Um, I posted what I thought was my last blog post on June 6th, but I've had multiple times of that where I feel like it's the last one, but the Lord takes me away for a while to have quiet time with him. And I liken that to if we're supposed to follow Jesus, what did he do? He had periods of time where he went into the wilderness or he went by himself to pray with the Father. So this is nothing new if we're following our Lord to be surprised that we may also be called to this. In fact, the Lord wanted me to know that it was him because after I did that, this is the final post until further notice on June 6th. There was something I thought I would have have to post, so I tried. I could not access my website to write a new post and edit it at all, no matter which way I went. And I tried multiple ways, and I finally thought the Lord about it, like I should have done in the first place. I thought maybe it's being hijacked or something. And I got a simple answer back. It's me. He was letting me know. Leave it alone. I need you to spend time with me. And so if some of you are feeling that drawing or have been feeling that drawing to set aside maybe ministry or something that you have been doing for the Lord for a quiet period, that's not surprising because he's calling many of us to that. 
And it doesn't mean we're in trouble. It just means that we need to be more quiet time with the Lord. Okay, with that, I'm going to go to this dream that I had on June 20th. And again, Johnny, it's not surprising that you were talking about Second Thessalonians and the diluting influence because that's the same scripture that I was given by Holy Spirit to share with this dream. And the title of the dream is Demonic Invasion of Our Dimension. Second Thessalonians 2, 8 to 12. Then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send apart from a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth with pleasure and wickedness. Before I share the dream, I do want to address that, that the Lord has shown me in dreams and words, visions. The deluding influence will be the aliens, our star brothers. They, can't, they are, are here to save us, to help humanity. They see it as a planet. They're going to help us move to the next evolutionary level. They have things that will help genetically enhance us, and that's the mark of the beast. The thing about, and, and it's possible the elect could be deceived, there is such a demonic level of supernatural evil associated with the deluding influence that the Father is sending for those who do not love the truth without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit inside of us, any of us could fall. The Holy Spirit allowed me to experience that for a split second, and my mind was heading directly in that direction, and I, would, I could feel myself being drawn and pulled in. And then the presence of the Holy Spirit rose up with the truth. So I'm encouraging you. These things that we share are not just to tickle your, oh, that's weird ears but for you to seek the truth of the matter of anything that we share and anything that anybody shares, be it a prophetic word, be it doctrine, teaching, anything, use it for the development of your relationship with Holy Spirit so you can get used to hearing his voice, to get used to confirmation, and that's the main point. The main point is not, oh, should I believe it or not, don't. Take my word for it. Don't take Jeff's word for it. Take it all to the Lord in prayer. Ask him directly, is this the truth? And then wait. Ask him to confirm it through the scriptures another way. And then ask him what you need to do about it. And the very bottom line is trust in the Lord. Also in the quiet time is the time to take and forgive. All right, now to the dream. I was t- now the, the first part I wasn't dreaming, but I'm going to give what was happening that went into whatever this was. I don't know what it was. So I'm going to just read from my notes. I was taking a nap late in the morning of June 20th of this year, this month. Then I heard a loud pop, like you hear when you open up a bottle of champagne. More like. I can't do it right now. I can usually do a good pop, but I can't do the pop. Anyway, I don't know if I was awake or asleep when I initially heard that pop, but it but it then went into a dream where I was telling whistleblower Jeff about that happening. I was in the dream telling Jeff about hearing the pop. I then went into a deep, deep sleep or vision, it was so vivid, I don't know what it was. I don't know if I was asleep or awake, if it was a dream or vision, I don't know. Anyway, here it is. I was standing inside of a closet that had a sliding door on it, and it faced an outside window. I was holding a cat, the new one I just rescued. I was looking outside, and suddenly 
went into a vision where I could see into outer space. I saw this thing assemble itself into the black cube I had used as an illustration for a prior post. And I think uh, Johnny was able to get a picture of it. It's basically the, the picture of the board from Star Trek that looks like a, a black, shiny cube with technology stuff on it. I'm going to have this posted up later and the other dream as well on my site. Anyway, back to the dream. I then saw electrical charges coming out of it, just like I described in my prior post. I was trying to see if the charges were green like I saw before, but I couldn't tell. I yelled, there's the cube, just like my dream. Then I picked up my cell phone so I could take a picture of it. No, there were multiple vantage points or dimensions in this dream where I seemed to be able to see in the spirit far beyond where I was, yet have an understanding of where I was at the same time. I could hear these creatures talking in their language, yet understand what they were saying as if if they were talking in English. I knew they were invading the earth. I knew... This was absolutely evil. I tried to start a video on my cell phone to get a picture of this thing, which was outside now. I was told by Holy Spirit, be still. I could feel the fear, yet knew the Lord was with me and directing me on what I needed to do. I was prompted to stay in the closet, not move, and quietly slide the door shut. I could see in the Spirit that these entities were peering in the window, but I also knew they could not see me. I could see in the spirit what was happening outside. These evil entities were rounding people up to take them somewhere. I didn't know where they were going or why they were being taken. I knew any people who were found would be taken by these entities. I was by myself with a cat being as still as possible in the closet hiding. Again, I knew the Lord was with me and guiding me at my every move. This felt so vivid, so real, I didn't move even when I was asleep. Upon awakening, I felt frozen with sorrow and had tears coming down. One of my cats jumped on top of me and curled up in my arms. It's as if the Lord sent her to me to soothe me as I was waking up. I don't know what that was since it was so vivid and realistic. It seemed like a combination dream slash vision. And here's the interpretation understanding. The pop represented the demonic forces invading our dimension. This will happen. The Holy Spirit gave me the title of this experience, the demonic invasion of our dimension. I wondered if this occurrence is related to the three days of darkness, and I feel yes in my spirit from Holy Spirit. This gives me understanding why we will be led to stay inside during this time, and Holy Spirit will be guiding us down to the smallest detail. I wondered why I felt prompted to previously post about a fake alien invasion. This is the understanding I was given. It will be fake because it will be demonic forces invading our dimension. This will be the deluding influence in, discussed in 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 12. And then my note, I wrote, I'm still feeling disgust about this while typing it up. It's going to be absolutely horrible, and we, the remnant, will be here when it happens. Um, like I said at the beginning, before Jeff started, I could not figure out what did this dream have to do with what he had to share. But if you're hanging with us, Holy Spirit brings it all together. To give understanding. I'm also going to share the the, um, the previous post, parts of it. That was from August 6, 2015, and I'm going to 
have this all up together on one post after our um, time here. This was a vision, and I saw a large, shiny black cube floating in outer space darkness. It was shifted at a 45-degree angle with the entire cube on one point, pointing in a southwest direction. I saw many green lights like dots also floating near that southwest point on the black cube. I asked the Lord, what is that? And he said, Jihad will kill millions in your country. Pray they will call my name in the day of trouble. I'm going to stop here. That kind of just, that was a little bit weird for me. So I had this vision of a black cube floating in outer space. That was weird enough. But then having the Lord say, Jihad will kill millions in your country. Pray they will call my name in the day of trouble. That Those two just didn't make sense to me. So I asked the Lord, could he give me a dream to confirm the vision in the word? They just did not seem to go together. And then he gave me a dream a few hours later after I fell asleep. In the dream, I was both an, an observer and I had a part in the dream. I was standing outside of an ornate Middle Eastern building that had large open archways with ornate stonework, both inside and outside. You could peer inside the building that did not have to be standing inside of it. This type of architecture you would see in ancient Persia, which is modern-day Iran. As an observer, I saw myself being held by Muslims who are about to burn me alive for being a Christian. That is all I remember about this dream. It confirmed the vision I had on the same night. I knew and know this is a warning dream from the Lord. With several days of prayer and seeking the Lord, I was given understanding of what is going to happen. Nothing will be able to stop this jihad because it is an instrument of judgment upon the nation, United States, and the of Babylon. There is going to be a demonic, demonically evil and darkly supernatural component to the jihad that is coming upon the United States. There will be dark forces that are supernaturally charged with demons. There will be no mercy shown. This jihad will arise suddenly and without warning. Only those who call in the name of Jesus will have eternal salvation during his judgment. Many will be those who die a martyr's death, but most will be those who go into eternal damnation. In 2014, there was a prophecy given by Rick Joyner that had a dream, and I have all this connected into that post I'm going to put up later, where ISIS Islamic terrorists now remember, this is 2014. Along with demonic entities, came across the southern border of the United States and attacked. According to Rick Joyner, the attack was so fierce, brutal, and barbaric that militia arose throughout the United States to come against this atrocity and the federal government that allowed it. That incident spawned chaos, which resulted in martial law. Now we know what's going on in the southern border invasion now. And many of the people coming across are not Mexican. There's some from Africa, Pakistan, Somalia, and other Muslim countries. This is going to happen. And then when I read, when I was reading that, it reminded me of what's happening to the South African white farmers now. They not just go in and kill them. They brutally torture them, some rape. So it's just just horrible. It would be it would be better to be shot or beheaded than have to go through. They torture them to death. Again, fear not. Psalm eighteen six. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From His temple, He heard my voice. My cry it came before Him into His ear. The black cube is also in Islam. In Mecca, they have the, the, it's called the Kaaba, and it houses what many believe to be a remnant of an asteroid, just the outer space asteroid. You can also find out through more research 
the cube is symbolized a form of state Saturn worship and the occult. That's the planet Saturn. It's actually Satan worship. And I'll have those references on the post that I put up later. One of the things that came to me also only today with the understanding is we're dealing with Iran right now. This is going to happen. I had a detailed morning dream about the Islamic Day of Jihad. It was the Iranians that were doing it. These are Persians. The prince of Persia was the demonic entity that stopped Daniel's prayers from being paid. And he had to have Michael the archangel intervene in order for the prayers to be answered. Right now, um, I got an understanding, oh, the prince of Persia is a fallen angel. Because Lucifer is the prince of the power of the air. The prince of Persia is a fallen angel. And that fallen angel of Persia is powering the Iranians with demonic tech, fallen angel technology that's related to that cube that I had to dream about. And then in the, or whatever that vision or dream, whatever that was, it was a technology thing that assembled itself. And then back in that previous vision, with the cube in 2015 and the Lord said jihad will kill millions in your country pray they will call on my name in the day of trouble without the presence and power of Holy Spirit submitting our lives to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords repenting when we have sinned and forgiving those who have sinned against us without him None of us will make it. This is coming, but remember, fear not. With that, Jeff, I'm turning it over to you. All right. I forgot to share something. Well, this is related directly um, to what you just said about the cube. And it was um, the gentleman... uh, David, what the David Jones uh, wrote to me, so I, I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and read that because I I forgot about that. Um, okay, here is what David Jones re- wrote to me. Jeff, this is urgent. My name is David Jones Sr. I'm a child of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am of the first fruits remnant. On August. 8th, 2018, I was taken into a all-night dreams and visions, and I was shown of the remnant and the lost and the lukewarm, that that a dividing was coming. The Lord has told me that, too. Uh, this, Those still on the fence would be swept away into evil of this world. Then I was shown a black box. Is that a coincidence, Linda? <laughs> well, I'll answer for you. No, it's no not. Coincidence. I, I okay. No coincidence. No coincidence in Hebrew. <laughs> no okay, coincidence. Go ahead. No coincidence. No coincidence. Right, okay, Johnny? No coincidence. All right. So he, David Jones was uh, shown... A black box, and within this black box was the red letters that began to appear. False flag alert. Then I came back and opened my eyes, and I grabbed my phone thinking a false flag event had happened. And all all that was on my phone was a notification from YouTube What? for a video from Mike444 titled False Flag Event. The picture for this video was a black background with black, uh, with red letters saying false flag alert. I watched the video and it was a word from our Lord given to you, which is, he means me, um, about the kickoff event. 
fast forward to November 18th, 2018. While I was in prayer in the spirit, I asked the Lord when would the false flag event occur, and I was immediately taken into a vision. I was up in the sky looking down upon a large city at night, and I heard the word Philadelphia, and the words Philadelphia appeared over the city. Then I was right back in my prayer. I write all these, all my dreams and visions, scriptures and audibles given to me down in my notebooks. Okay, last night around 9 p.m. Now he's he's talking about the night before the um, the explosion at the uh, Philadelphia refinery. So the night before at 9 p.m., I came out of the prayer and I was told to read through these notebooks and I opened the page and I opened to the vision of Philadelphia and the kickoff event. A sister in Christ then sent me a message asking what I was doing. I told her that the Lord had led me to to my notebooks and I was right on the vision of Philadelphia and I told her that this was what I was giving and I was as uh, this was going to occur before the kickoff event. This morning, I wake up, another message from the sister. She is losing it because of what I told her last night. She turned on the TV this morning, and she sees explosions in Philadelphia, the largest gas refinery on the east coast of the United States, exploded at 4 a.m. Eastern Time. The kickoff event that you were told about is about to occur, Jeff. I have no platform. Okay, so I'm there, Um, and I shared it on my blog and on YouTube and anywhere I could because this is a time marker um, for the kickoff event to occur. We passed it. The Lord's given me another time marker, which is the sinking of the Abraham Lincoln. Once you see that, you'll know we're closer. Now, we don't know when. We still don't know when. And all these people guessing dates all the time, they should stop and start seeking the face of the Lord. That would be my advice to them because it would be time much better spent so I since um, I'm going to read the word that this gentleman David Jones was referencing that the Lord gave me back in October of 2017 well I'm not going to read all of it because it's very long Um, but I think I'm going to read the The part that's pertinent to what we're talking about right now, if I can find, um, yeah, right here. Okay, I'm going to start right here. Uh, What you see right now on the world stage is a grand illusion. They are making men believe in the false paradigm of good guys versus bad guys in this world. But I tell you, all are on the side of the enemy. They have set up two, two, as in the number two, to be their fall guys. And they will hide their evil that they have planned behind them. They are the puppet masters who pull the strings and create The back and forth, verbal battles, violence, murder, chaos, and confusion. They are the ones who control Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping, and Kim Jong-un, as well as every other leader of every nation in this world. You guys need to get that that Satan controls every other leader of every other nation in this world. These leaders do not realize that the darkness is so deep, and though they 
think they do good, they are in deep darkness. Yet the darkness of those behind the scenes is much deeper and darker. Their leader, who is Satan, will unite people of every tribe, tongue, nation against me to try to overthrow me, but he will not succeed, for I have won the victory. I have told you many times there will be an event that begins the sequence of the end time destruction and cataclysm that is soon followed by my wrath. I have told you many things about this event. It will be the kickoff of many other events that will be many times worse. This event will occur occur in America, and it will be ten times more destructive than anything she has ever seen. After this event, the financial system of America and then the world will, will begin to completely collapse. It will not be overnight, but it will happen quickly. This event will be a false flag attack orchestrated by the dark leaders that are now known as the deep state. They hid in the shadows, but I see them, and I will expose them after I am done letting them do their destructive deeds as part of the judgment on an unrepentant people to drive them into my open waiting arms. Understand that all of these judgments are to cause repentance and redemption of the wicked generation who has not followed my ways. God isn't doing these, allowing these things just to be a big meanie like a kid uh, with a magnifying glass on an ant. He wants people to repent and turn to him. The judgments will become much worse and worse as the world does not repent. The false flag event will involve fire, but not the kind that you would expect. Once again, as on 9-11, this will come from advanced weapons of an alien technology that most of you do not even know exists. It will be made to look like one of the fall guys has caused the destruction, but it will actually come from the enemy within. The other fall guy will in turn retaliate, and thus it shall begin. America entered the Second World War on a false flag attack, Pearl Harbor, and she will enter into the Third World War in such much the same fashion. She will now find that I am no longer fights for her. America shall suffer humiliating and devastating defeat because she no longer follows me. After the financial crash, civil war in America will begin because all of the benefits and entitlements of the people have come to love and expect will be gone, and only the following me, those following me closely will be provided for. And this will be a huge test for my children, the giving of their food and provisions to those who are lost. But this will be the way that many come into my kingdom through selfless, loving acts of my children. This is when you will show your faith by your works, and those who do not will find that they don't really know me like they thought. And I'll end with that and hand it back over to you, Linda. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Mm -hmm. Before I share this next dream, I want to highlight the importance of not underestimating the brilliance of the Iranians. I would encourage you to go to one of the English newsletter sites Farce, S-A-R-S, News. Look at some of the tabs they have on technology, science, space, military. Remember, these are brilliant, brilliant people. They, have, they are empowered by the prince 
of Persia, the fallen angel of Persia, and they've been sending their brightest, most, um, the brightest and best students around the world to the best universities to learn chemistry and technology, science, physics, aerospace, engineering. So we're not dealing with with people that that are sitting outside in the desert cooking over dung campfires. These are brilliant people. Also, the fastest growing underground church in the world is in Iran. So we have siblings in Iran within that country that are just as in love with Jesus as any of us. So remember, Jesus said, love your enemy, pray for those who persecute you. I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And also remember, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. It's principalities and powers. These are demonic forces in the dark places. The troops that are going to be invading us and have already been invading us and are already sleeper cells in us, some of them may be also sleeper cells in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Heavenly Father has his plan, and he's not going to show his hand to the enemy. I rebuke anybody that's setting these dates. What a foolish thing to do. In the military, why would you why would you broadcast your military strategies to the enemy? Oh on May first we're gonna send all of our troops to this border. You're not gonna do it, so just stop it. Like Jeff said, stop it. Don't set dates. Don't set oh, I think it could be between June twenty first and July fourth. Stop it. No one knows the day or the hour when Jesus returns, but the Bible also says when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction. Now, some people think that that some are going to be going out quickly. They are in war, in, in, in volcanic eruptions coming from nowhere, earthquakes, etc., Now is the time to seek the Lord, put aside the things that are holding you back. If the Lord is prompting you to assist somebody, do it. If he's prompting you to get rid of something in your life, maybe you've got five cars, give four of them away to family that need it, etc. Don't be religious about it. Seek the Lord for what you are being called to do. Anyway, I could go on preach mode. I think I'm trying to avoid this dream. It bothered me so much. I had the dream on June 22nd of this month. I didn't want to write it down. It wouldn't go away. God dreams don't go away. And I didn't write it down until today. I knew I had to write it down, and I knew I had to share it. I thought, well, maybe there won't be enough time. Well, hoping there wouldn't be enough time, I just... This one was just really distressing to me, but I'm just going to, I'll stop avoiding it. Here it is. The Lord gave me the title of it is Demonic Hybrid in the Church. And the scripture reference was 1726. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. And here's the dream. I was married to a previous spouse, and we were in a huge Christian conference setting, sitting on the front row. It was like a a large, not arena, but a huge, huge church. Most of the attendees at this conference were married couples, but there were some singles. To encourage the married couples, the speaker told all of the married couples to give each other a kiss, which he did. Suddenly... What appeared to be a petite woman with dark hair fell off of her chair. My spouse ran over to assist her. Next thing I know, he was gone with her and had given her my coat. Several people asked me where he went, and I didn't know. Time elapsed. Then my spouse came back into the conference setting with what initially appeared to be the same petite woman. Holy Spirit let me know that they had intimate relations with each other. I was also shown that this thing, what this thing looked like in the 
spirit. It was a bug-like demonic creature with multiple rows of eyes, and it was approximately eight feet tall. I commanded it to present itself as it truly was. My spouse didn't appear to be negatively impacted by the appearance of this demonic creature due to the lust that it provoked in my act. It had such a, he was still drawn to it and was choosing this demonic hybrid over me or any other human. My ex looked at this demonic creature and asked, what would our baby look like? This creature then somehow was able to produce a visualization of a hybrid baby. And that was the end of the dream. I finished reading my notes. As I'm typing this up, remember, I typed it up today because I was really trying to avoid it, but I couldn't. This is what Holy Spirit is prompting me to write. Tell them you are living as in the days of Noah that you have been warned about. There are demonic hybrid creatures living amongst you right now, yet they are cloaked in a human hologram that gives them the appearance of being human. Do not be deceived by the lie. Seek the truth in everything, for the deluding influence sent by the Father will remove all ability for salvation if you do not want the truth. You will then fall for the lie. Prepare yourself with humility and holiness in setting aside your will, your way, and your plan. Allow me, the Spirit of the living God, to direct you and reveal all truth to you. The death of humanity is the plan of the adversary, Satan, but the salvation of souls will occur as the Heavenly Father has planned. Gear up in the faith of your King Jesus, for the destruction of humanity will require total reliance on your King. Take all thoughts captive and seek the truth, for the truth will keep you free from the lies of Satan. Prepare for persecution from those you think are Christians, for many are not. Many delight in the rituals, social galas, and attributes associated with religion, yet they do not know the truth. They do not know the king. They do not want me in their midst, for I will disrupt their plans, remove their idols, and bring conviction that leads to repentance. Woe to those who lead people astray with words of man. These will be thrown into the lake of fire on the day of the king's judgment if they do not repent. Take heed, prepare. Eternity is forever, and now is the day of salvation. And then the note, this dream reminded me of the old 1988 sci-fi movie, They Live, where special glasses were allowed to view to see the truth. And the original story had reptilians cloaked as humans. That was the original written version of it. The movie showed these entities more like a creepy, weird version of human skeletons. And I'll show I'll have um, I'll have a, a a link to the movie trailer on this post that I'm going to post as well. All right, Jeff, back over to you. All right. Um, I wanted to mention, you know, we were talking about the fallen angel technology. Um, whether you guys know it or not, that all these things that are, you know, very advanced, um, like what happened at uh, during 9-11, are from the fallen angels. Uh, that's where the knowledge came from. Um, recently, I listened to an interview that Rick Wiles did on True News. Um, from 2012, and he rebroadcasted it. Um, I think it was last week, wasn't it, Linda? I know I alerted you of that show. Well, anyways, it, it was either this week or last week. Um, but uh, like Linda was saying, um, the Iranians—they're—they're—they're they're, they're brilliant people. And they 
have a way to intensify lasers by using rubies um, that that the government of I, I believe it's America or, or maybe DARPA probably DARPA is, was trying to figure it out but the government uh, he believes that the, this guy that Rick Wilde said on the interview, believed that the government of Iran had um, figured this out. And this is why that they brag so much and say that they're going to turn Israel into an ashtray and they're going to turn Washington, D.C. into an ashtray and New York and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because... R- now I can't remember. I wasn't really prepared to um, say this, but it, it, I believe it was the Holy Spirit put it back into my mind. Um, Linda, do you remember the what the name of that guy was? Um, started with a J. Um, that. The, it was like a fallen angel that gave them the this ruby cup. Um, oh, no, I don't. Can you hear me okay? I got disconnected. Yeah, yeah, we can hear okay. you okay. I don't remember. Was it I, Jams? Jamson? Or I, I really don't remember. Along that line. Oh, okay. You remember talking to me about it, don't you? Yes, I do. And yeah. I thought um, when I did a little bit of research on that, um, I had sent you an email. It sounded, I did some research, and it is based on um, Persian mythology. And in the Persian uh-huh. mythology, it's a ruby cup or ruby box that allows them to see into the future. It's like a, a cup of, I'll, I'll have to look it up. You keep talking. I'll see if I can find it. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh- uh, maybe I'll sing that old song, two for T and T for two, and I don't know what to say. Now, um, so anyways, um, this this guy that we're talking about is probably, most likely, the Prince of Persia that is spoken about in um, the book of Daniel. And that, this guy's, you know, he's no slouch. He gave Michael a run for his money for 21 days um, before Daniel got the answer to his prayer that Michael had. So this is a strong, strong entity. Um, so, you know, they are, Iran, they're getting help from the dark side. Um and like like the word of the Lord that I just read said, all of the countries of are are on the dark side. All of the leaders of all the countries are on the dark side. Now the people in the countries can be saved, but most likely, um, I would venture to guess most of the the leaders of the countries may have sworn their allegiance and had some kind of genetic enhancement done um, that they cannot well, be Jeff, saved. Okay, mm-hmm. found it. It is the cup of Jamsid, J-A-M-S-H-I-D. And if you did a okay. search on that, cup of Jamsid or Jamsid, Jamshid, J-A-M-S-H-I-D. And then... Um, there was a word the Lord gave me back. I don't know when it was, and I'll quote, all governments are in cahoots with Satan. Now, he didn't tell yeah. me at that point in time if every global government person, everyone in power, took the DNA enhancement, but that was what I got. And then for the record, for those who just, just pray about this, I'm going to just say it again because it's not being said very much, Obama is the Antichrist. He is coming back. The current pope is the false prophet. 
I was shown Tense is not human, never was. He is a hybrid. I was also shown Trump was human, but he had chosen to take what was called the DNA enhancement or genetic enhancement. And he was like Nimrod who became a gibberine. Well, Trump is like Nimrod who became a gibberine. Nimrod was over Babylon. Trump right now is over mystery Babylon. Um, there is no making America great again. The red hat that they wear, the Lord show me that is like the fez that was worn in the Ottoman Empire. It was the same hat that's used by the Shriners. It's red with the swords on it. It's red because it's going, it's, it's um, lifting up the Babel of uh, the Ottoman Empire slaughter of Christians. They had the same thing. It was gray. When they slaughtered the Christians, they dipped their hat into the blood of Christians to show the martyr of the Christians. So when you see the Shriners in their little clown stuff, those hats are glorifying the death of Christians during the Ottoman Empire. And the Lord showed me the red hat are showing the future plan of the death of, of Christians. Trump is not a Christian. He now serves Satan. He can never be saved. He is a hybrid. If you take the mark of beast, your DNA will change. You will not be able to be saved. You will be a hybrid. You will become a human robot. The fallen angels are increasing the demonic forces around us. The spiritual darkness has been strange these last several days. It's like a swirling vortex of activity. And then that dream, it goes back to the beginning of the dream that I shared with the pop. They are waiting to come into our dimension and manifest in front of our face. But remember, 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 the Father is on the throne. They can't have the war they want to have until he allows it. Otherwise, they would have had it during the Antichrist Obama's reign. Everything is in the Father's time and not in the global elite time. So remember that. Fear not. He is with you. He will guide you. Take time now to hear his voice, and you can hear it by reading the word. Death, back to you. All right. I just want to tell everyone that I agree 100% with uh, what Linda just said. And, um, you know, no matter when this is going to happen, we are getting closer by the day to it happening. And we can see the events that are just piling up, and, and they just keep on multiplying. And, they, and, you know, I know when I was uh, running the website Whistleblower Jeff, I couldn't. I could not keep up with the news. And you know what? Even in the the almost a month since uh, I I quit posting s- stuff on there, it's in the the events have increased and it, it's just amazing. Um I just saw something before the show of um uh, in Mexico near the equator they had three feet of hail, and semi trucks were stuck in it. It's it it looked like it looked like snow, and these people are right next to the equator. It's, it's just amazing, and this type these types of weather phenomenon that are happening right now, it's from the the destroyer of nations that you can read about in Jeremiah chapter four. And it's no joke. This is really coming. And the global elite want to get everyone under control before it hits. And we don't know when that's going to be either. (laughs) So I don't think that they really do, to tell you the truth. But they might. They know more than I do, probably. I just know what I hear from the Lord. Um, 
But, you know, we we need to just to start seeking the Lord like never before. That, that is the only answer that there is to any of this. Because it, he is the only way out of this world with any kind of life. If you go out of the world without him, you have eternal death and fire. Eternity. Not a million years. Not a hundred million years. Not a billion years. Not a trillion years. All of eternity. So, what should we say then? We need to be holy as he is holy. And we need to make sure our garments are spotless and white without any wrinkles. And that means if you know of any sin that you are willfully committing, that you say, geez, well, you know, God understands. Yeah, he understands that he died for you and he shed his blood for you to get rid of that sin. So we need to stop messing around. The time has come that we need to repent. We need to get right with him, and we need to do it now. And I'm going to say a prayer right now for all those who would like to um, agree with me and repeat it with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I repent of my sin before you right now. And Holy Spirit, just put in the minds of everyone that is praying with me what they need to deal with right now. Now, if you have a thought in your head that is from him, and I just ask you to confess that sin before him and give it to him and tell him to take it. Take it away. Lord, we give you these sins right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask you to take it away. We ask you to take the desire in our hearts to do it away in the name of Jesus. And give us the strength by your Holy Spirit to to quit doing this before you. You have told us that without holiness, no man will see God. And we believe what you said is true, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask you to to, um, to keep on convicting us every time that we do something that is a sin before you. And, Lord, so that we can confess it immediately and repent of it. And, Lord, we just want to give you our lives completely. And, Lord, we want to be part of your great harvesting army that goes out and seeks and saves the lost, Lord. And we want you to fill us completely with your Holy Spirit so that we are overflowing, that we can touch others, Lord. We will not make it without your strength. And, Lord, we are totally dependent on you, and we trust you, and we love you, and we just thank you for every promise in your word. And, Lord, we just want to see you face to face. In Jesus' name we pray it all. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you both so much for joining us tonight. What a powerful program, absolutely gushing and overflowing with just such incredibly important and very 
relevant, imminent information that we all need to be aware of. And we just, just really need to seek the Lord, drawing closer to him. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, so hard for so many of us because we're under so much attack and onslaught. And, and sometimes that attack just manifests itself as, you know, things that we can't really get around, you know, uh, life issues that present themselves and are unavoidable and we have to deal with them head on. And Father, we just pray that you will just pull us back in, pull us back in, open up doors for us to be able to spend more time with you, even in the busyness of the day that is thrust upon us when we have no control over it. And we just praise you for your angels and your warrior angels just to be able to stand around about us and to protect us and to to give us that time that we need to draw in close to you and to spend time in the dark alone with you and to see your face and to feel your presence and hear your voice and we just praise you and thank you so much Linda God bless you Jeff so what a powerful program thank you so much for joining us tonight thank you Johnny God bless you as well bless you thank, thank you. you powerful program God bless you all we'll see you uh, at the Wednesday night program at 8 o'clock, Lord willing. Hopefully not as much uh, chatter in the chat room. Well, more holy chatter and less, you know, demonic chatter. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday, Lord willing. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jeff. Goodbye. Good night. Good night.